Hello horror fans, welcome to my first video presenting my top 10 romantic horror films. Last month's theme uh, for that month, so I'm a little bit behind on this video and I'm not too well versed in that subgenre of films, but uh, I think I've got a pretty good top 10, so uh, let's begin. My number 10 is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, I've mentioned before in a written article or whatever that I'm kind of a sucker for uh, the gothic horror themes. So that one kind of has that to a T. It stars Keanu Reeves, Winona Ryder, and Gary Oldman in the role of uh, Dracula in all his various forms in the movie. It's considered to be one of the most uh, fateful adaptations to the novel Dracula by Bram Stoker and uh, it's directed by Francis Ford Coppola. It also stars the iconic Anthony Hopkins in the role of Van Helsing. The movie is about two and a half hours long, so it, uh, it's very long viewing, and uh, it kind of feels that long. There's some pretty slow bits, but it definitely fits uh, this list. Dracula's made into a more sympathetic character in this one, and it definitely has more of the romantic elements from the book, which is why they consider it to be more a faithful adaptation than uh, the Universal Dracula's, for instance. My number nine is Return of the Living Dead 3. And if you haven't seen that one yet, it's currently free to watch on 2B TV. All of the Return of the Living Dead movies have their own stories, so you never have to watch the previous one in order to uh, get into the... Uh, the following entries. This movie is about a curious couple that break into a military compound and discover that uh, the personnel there are experimenting on corpses and are able to reanimate them using a, a gas that they've manufactured. Later, the girlfriend character played by Melinda Clark dies in a motorcycle accident, so the boyfriend brings her back to that military uh, outpost and reanimates her using the gas. At first she seems pretty normal but as the movie progresses you see her condition deteriorate and she gets more and more violent and blood hung like bloodthirsty and uh, I had a lot of fun with this movie. And it kind of reminds you of the old quote sometimes dead is better from uh, Pet Cemetery. Number nine is a uh, Swedish vampire movie called Let the Right One In. This movie is based on a novel by what many consider to be the Stephen King of Sweden, John Linkvist. It's, it's a, a unique story that follows a, a young boy who lives in an apartment complex and he meets a little girl that appears to be about his age. Uh, little does he know she's a vampire, but despite that they, uh, they develop a, a close bond. This movie's got plenty of cute romantic little scenes, plenty of gore and violence, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. There's also an Americanized version of it starring Chloe Grace Moretz, and it's, it's like a screen per screen like adaptation of the first movie. There's not a lot of differences, so uh, if I had to pick a favorite one, I'd say the original, but they're very close. The uh, remake is also very good. Number seven is a gothic horror movie uh, directed by Tim Burton, starring, of course, Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci, and uh, Christopher Walken as the uh, iconic Headless Horseman. I think this is probably one that everyone's watched. Uh, Johnny Depp uh, sent to a town uh, in an attempt to uh, solve a case involving grisly murders that are apparently performed by a man without a head on a horse. The Hitler's Horseman. While he's doing that, he's uh, falling in love with a young woman from the town, played by Christina Ricci. Yeah, not much, to, not uh, too much to say. I love the atmosphere, of course. The olden day look and the uh, creepiness to it. The characters are great and it's just a lot of fun. My number six is probably the most underrated underrated movie in its franchise, and that's uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. In this movie, Freddy tries to uh, possess a, a teenager called Jessie, 
uh, in order to use his body as a uh, portal into the real world where he can cause more mayhem. Jesse, of course, has to try to figure out how to stop Freddy before he's fully possessed. Um, and, of course, his girlfriend attempts to help, and she's uh, ultimately the real hero in this story. Not too many people talk about this one as being one of their tops in the franchise, but I think this is Freddy as his, his scariest. Uh, I think uh, Robert England did a great job in that, well, in this role, but in this role in particular. Every Freddy movie after this one, Freddy gets a little funnier and funnier until he's a complete cartoon character and Freddy's dead. But in the, in Freddy's Revenge, he's menacing and creepy, and he's just Freddy at, at his greatest right there. I think this film is awesome. Number five is the uh, movie we did for the last week of February uh, for the uh, romantic horror theme month, and that was Crimson Peak. I pretty much said everything I wanted to say in my written review for Crimson Peak, directed by Guillermo, De Guillermo blah, blah, blah. Guillermo del Toro, and it, uh, you know, it has awesome visuals, fantastic story. I really love that movie, and it's one of my fiance's favorite movies. I love the soundtrack to the movie as well. I still listen to it once in a while. Uh, yeah, just fantastic stuff. Now the rest of my list is pretty much horror comedy movies now. My number four is An American Werewolf in London, directed by John Landis. It follows a couple of American buddies who go to uh, UK on a road trip. And while they're out in the country, they're attacked by uh, a werewolf. Uh, one of the buddies doesn't, uh, doesn't survive it. The other one gets uh, wounded pretty badly. So uh, he ends up falling for the nurse that's caring for him. And... Uh, stays at her apartment and stuff but uh, not everything is well for him because he's now a werewolf he's suffered suffering from the curse and has to suffer through transformations one transformation uh, is you can see in the movie and it's probably one of the best uh, transformation scenes ever uh, ever put on film so i think this is a uh, must watch for any horror fan it's a it's a comedy. It's funny. It's got some scary scenes. It's got the whole shebang. My number three is a zomcom called Brain Dead, also known as Dead Alive, directed by Peter Jackson. That's right. The guy who brought you the uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy made a zombie movie early in his career. The movie is about a guy called Lionel who lives uh, with his mom. And his mom uh, gets bitten by a, a mutant monkey and gets, uh, you know, transmits this disease, which turns her into a zombie. So the uh, the, the zombie virus slowly starts to spread, and Lionel uh, gathers up the zombies and keeps them in his basement away from the public. So he breaks up with his girlfriend in an attempt to keep her safe from uh, from harm. All the while, he's trying to keep this zombie plague as a secret in this basement. Uh, later, his uncle decides to throw a party at the house, and the zombies get free, and all hell breaks loose. And that's where the real fun starts. That third act is pretty insane and a lot of fun. So I recommend this to anyone. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get to watch it in our group here eventually. It's highly recommended. My number two movie is the original Zomcom, Shaun of the Dead, starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. An electronic store supervisor deals with the monotony of everyday life by going to the local pub. A lot. And his girlfriend gets sick of it and decides to break up with him. A zombie plague hits their little town, so Shaun decides to gather up all the... the, the survivor she runs into and uh, decides to go to the pub once again because he thinks it's the safest place in town and his girlfriend while facing his many acts of heroism falls in love with him all over again this is a movie that I consider to be a modern classic another much must watch for everybody it's another one that we'll eventually watch uh, as part of our our little group here now for my number one 
a romantic horror movie. And that movie is Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. This movie is about uh, two best friends played by Alan uh, Tudyk and Tyler Labine. They decide to travel to a remote cabin in the woods that they've bought in order to fix it up and uh, do a little bit of fishing. Nearby, a group of uh, college kids on vacation decide to set up camp. And one of the college kids falls off a rock injuring herself. One of the rednecks goes out to help her. And uh, they end up falling in love with each other. But the college kids think that she's being kidnapped. So from there all hell ensues and it's a uh, hilarity throughout. This is another move I went to. I went into and uh, didn't know what to expect. I didn't had never heard of it before when I, I first rented it, and it uh, has easily become one of my favorite movies. Actually, so many of the movies that I consider to be my favorite movies, I went into completely blind of expectation. So it's definitely the best way to discover movies uh, that you love. And uh, if I was to compile like a top 100 list of movies, then this would be close to the top of it, I think. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video, and uh, I'll be uh, preparing the next one soon for uh, the current month's theme, the uh, Badass Ladies of Horror. So I'll be working on that, and expect that video soon. Thanks. Bye.